Hey, Becky with the good hair. Let me show you something. My name stitched on that, boy. You gonna remember this K and this B, boy. You talked about my mama's son. Just remember, all you had to do was be a man and apologize. But this today ain't really about you. I just put that in there just because I knew that would get the people watching. Because if you and Jack were some real dudes, y'all would be doing what I'm doing right now. But you can't. You can't. You might can talk. You might can scream and shout. But as long as they hand in your pocket, you ain't free, boy. You got to do this. This what freedom look like. I shook up the world. Yep. From this little old front seat of my truck. That they taught you to speak with that feminine tongue, boy. And yeah, from the front seat of my truck. And just like when I was in Brunswick, Georgia, with no shoes on my feet. And just like I overcame those odds, <laughs> I overcome your ass. Excuse me, your butt. Because I put the kids thing on here. Because I'm going to clean this one up for you. Because like I said, this one is bigger than you and Jack. Y'all want to make it like I'm crazy. See, the title is, It's Okay to Be a Man. And see, this is proof positive. It's okay to be a man. I came here cussing, rooting, tooting, booting. Bringing up my own sayings, being myself, being an individual. And there's so many men out there right now that just feel choked off and left behind because they got to pretend so much. They got to hide who they really are. They, they like raging bulls. Some of you dudes listen to me talk and because you ain't never had no mama's cooking or whatever your mama's cooking is telling you, woman, woman, woman. So you don't understand. That a lion don't care about the opinion of sheep. Shout out Kevin Gates. Because that's true. When he put that in a song, I said, whoa. What lion walk around apologizing to everybody and asking their opinion? And then some of you men hear me speak and it makes your skin crawl. You want to you look at your wife and say, uh-uh, he a bad man, bad man, toxic man. Listening to what they told you what a man is. Some of you want to get aggressive. Oh, he talked this. No, I played by the rules of the game. And you talked about my mama's son. And I told you, you don't know what that meant to me. So you want to talk about something that means something to me? So I talked about something that meant something to you. That's why you don't talk with that effeminate tongue to a man, boy. It is okay to be a man. That's right. America don't want you to be a man. No, they don't. That's why they're teaching kids. Look at what boys are going through in schools. Boys are not even learning. Black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level. And it ain't because the teachers are bad. It's because they're not even paying teachers a decent, decent enough wage. I'm an athlete. Why would you pay me so much to entertain? What are you trying to distract the people from? If the kids are our next generation, why ain't the focus on their education? You would rather teach them about their gender, their identity, before you teach them about coding. And which one has proven to make a child more successful? Look up the numbers for you, what happens when you teach a child coding and what they become. Why don't we have coding teachers in every school, in every class around America if this is what make these kids successful and these kids are our future? Still think I'm crazy? Please explain to me why these teachers are sitting these young boys down in chairs that got all this testosterone and, and you know they need to run around and move and do interactive learning, but you sit them in the chairs and then you punish them for wanting to get up, especially the black boy that got a little more testosterone. You make this boy sit down all day. You know what happens? See, I have a dog. Anybody that knows that have an animal, 
And not to say that little boys are wild animals, but we have that we have that thing in us. And so if I don't take my dog out for a walk, you know what's gonna happen probably? If I don't get that energy out, if I don't run her, guarantee she's gonna chew the fuck out of something in that house. So my question is, excuse me, chew the heck out of something in that house. Now my question is, why would people who are way smarter than me take the time out and not look up the numbers of what's going on and say, this is how we make a change. We're going to pay teachers the same way that we pay athletes so they can ride around in Maseratis because kids need to do the wiggle wiggle and they need to have fun while they're learning. You need to make school fun. Don't Amazon or Google do the interactive uh, working so guys and uh, men and women feel good about coming to work. But no, you want to pay teachers almost nothing. And then you want to have the kids sitting down all day with all this testosterone. So you're training men not to be men from the beginning. That's why so many men don't know how to be men. That's why so many are brainwashed, buying shoes. Now, y'all can say, why now? Why now, Kwame? Well, why would I talk while I'm getting paid by them? Remember, I just said I'm not above the rules. They had their hand in my pocket. I was getting paid. Why would I talk and not be able to help mama so my mama can sprinkle her cooking on the golf course? That's why they not talking. That's why they not saying nothing. That's why they keep giving you these celebrities that they control. Yeah, mama's cooking. They're not giving you no real heroes that's out here in the ground. And any celebrity that talk like I'm talking, I keep getting people telling me, oh, pray for them, be okay for them, y'all watch out for them. So y'all been trained already too. Y'all know better. Ain't that better? Patrice O'Neal. R.I.P. So they got y'all trained too. They got all of us trained. When they started that following and like, now it's all about who we like. It's not about the conversation. You can mention certain people's name. Hey, let me tell you what Candace Owens said. Oh, I don't like her. I don't even want to hear that. But let me tell you what she said. Oh, hell no. Excuse me. They don't even want to hear it. They trained you now. You in a yep. simulation. They trained you not to like me. And they went all around the world with Stephen A. Smith, their little yard dog, and all of the media. I'm talking about 10 years, 20 years. But even after I'm done playing, they asked players about me. And players, I don't blame them. They didn't understand what they was doing. And I'm so wrong, Stephen A. It's just about me. I'm just this little bus that's angry. It's just about me. Stephen A., what did you tell Westbrook? Mm-hmm. What did you tell Westbrook? Didn't you, say, didn't you allegedly? Cause I gotta watch what I say around y'all because y'all watching me. That's why I'm in a garage and watching the background and everything I'm doing. Told you I'm going to be away from you. Hey, <laughs> moving different. <laughs> My mama's cooking, boy. <laughs> so, and, and you YouTubers that streaming me, uh, please put my, because I'm allowing you to do it for now. And then I'm going to tell you when not to do it. And I'm only going to let a certain few YouTubers that was messing with me before. Ticket TV, uh, Jada Black. Uh, 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 I'm missing one guy. And he my Carcino. I'm going to mess with those dudes. And Tommy, you definitely can do it. You already know that. But uh, everybody else, y'all going to stop streaming me and getting all these views. And y'all not even putting my bus life even in the description box. So that's a little rude. Yep, and I appreciate the shout out and I appreciate everything that you allowed us to do when we was getting the message out. And that's why I've always on all the videos shouted out that they subscribe to your page. That they go to your YouTube page and subscribe to you. 100% I did. And for them, I know I'd never put you in my description box because I didn't, haven't been in my description box in forever. But 
if that's what you want, I know it's it be done. That's no problem. So I wouldn't uh, take care of that it, it, ASAP. But I've always told them to go subscribe to your page. And I know you weren't talking to, to me or Ticket and the rest of us. Because I know Ticket probably didn't did it too. Then shouted out your page and everything else. And everybody else going to ride with you. All the people that you name. Uh, but thank you, man, for giving us our flowers, man. For holding it down and doing what we're doing because we we spreading the we spreading it out <laughs> you know and yeah we getting hit but uh these other people yeah I, I don't know what they own but but uh you know well, I know what they doing but besides that it is what it is but now everybody's getting the message so I'm just waiting to see what's next because <laughs> I know something big is coming because you you got to the point where you didn't show the world that there's something else. It's always been there. They just see the thing is, is that they treat it as if, hmm, this is just some little bitty thing. We're we're on a major network that we're we're so much more important than you. And I always said it was going to take an athlete. It's going to take somebody who used to play in the league. They're going to come in and they're going to side with somebody and it's over. It's all over for them. All of that behavior patterns that they were doing, it's over for that. That's going to fall. And when that falls, they ain't going to have no way of getting all the stuff back. They done. So, I knew that the whole system was going to change. The whole thing was going to come crumb, crumbling and falling down because they were acting more irresponsible with their platform. And the network was choosing to let them be irresponsible. Now, instead of journalists that you have on these sports networks, you're having nothing but opinion-based shows. ESPN quickly switched up to a, a LLC to, re, to see, receive no backlash or responsibility for what happens on these shows. You don't have to be correct. It's all opinion based. And now you see more of those shows and you see guys that used to be journalists. They used to be journalists. Now these people are doing what everyone else is doing on social media platforms. The only thing they trying to say is, well, I have a, I, I went to Brown. <laughs> I played some college ball and <laughs> I interviewed people. I worked at ESPN. So that means I know more than you. I'm in those locker rooms. Now, it's a lot of you those were in those rooms. But a lot of you know certain people was full of it. But you wouldn't call them out because you knew. What would come if you did that? You ain't had the balls to do it. But see, if you can... See, they can easily go out to that one person. But when you have a collective group of people that's spreading the word, it's kind of hard to take that down, ain't it? See? When you got a collective group, it's kind of hard to take that down. Now let's go to let's go to the points that he was pointing out, the educational school system. We told you a long time ago about how poor the educational system is. That kids learn better from homeschool than they did going to school. All kids don't learn the same. It has been proven that we all don't learn the same. We are left brain, subject oriented learners, most African Americans. Caucasians are more right brain, 
object-oriented learners. We are subject-oriented learners. They tried to compare the way the European Caucasians, how their testing scores is always higher than the uh, blacks here in the United States, but they didn't go to Africa. You see, they didn't go outside of the country. They tried to show the testing and the learning system like they learn better than us. No, it's because you're trying to train us European ways of learning. And the majority of our culture are based on learning from a subject which means that we learn better from a person better than they do. They learn from a book. They can read instructions and they need coordinations and numbers and analytics. They're really good with those. And they learn better from that than they do from a person. Now, with that being said, We've had to learn differently. Our history and culture, we read from right to left. So we start at the back of the book and read it to the front. We never read from this way, the front page, all the way to the back. Reading was done in the other way. And when you get to the front of the book, you close it because <laughs> it's over. You've read the whole book. Did you know that that was the way to read? Why would they change that to make us go from the opening book from the beginning? No, you start from the back, work your way to the front, close the book. It's done. That's how you that's how you used to read. That's why most people here, they instantly go and read that way. I never understood why I used to do that sometimes, reading the back of the book. I would go to the back of the newspaper, start reading. I would go to the back of the magazine, start reading. We never knew any of this at that time. It was just instinctively in my DNA to do that. There's plenty of things about culture you have not been taught. They have snatched things away from you that are, were rightfully yours. So our educational system, they, here's what I don't get. With all this technology, and knowledge in the palm of our hands now. They've made learning easier, right? Why aren't we learning more? Why come or how come in the 1980s we were smarter than we are today? Do you know at 10 years old, I could travel damn near anywhere in this world by myself? I was allowed to be outside till the lights come on at 10, running around by myself. My parents didn't know where the heck I was. They just knew when that light came on, I better be in the house. That's what they knew. That light come on, boy, you better be in this house. That's all we know. And the educational system is going lower, lower, and lower because they overcrowded the classrooms, overcrowded them completely. But this is only in the urban cities. Now, places where I live, where there's a nurturing school system and a better environment, they don't teach them how not to stand up and be men and lead. They promote that. They promote, 
opportunity. They have business economics classes. They don't have those in the inner city. They don't have economics. They're not taught economics. In the hood, you're not taught economics class. Why not? You have to go out and seek it. In the inner cities, they're taking out all these jobs that teach you trades. Music was taken out of school. Why would they take music out of the school? Because blacks in the 70s, in the 80s, in the cities, all around the Midwest, that's how you got the Jackson 5. That's how you had all of these bands that came up. It was Everybody had a band. It was about five, six, seven bands in every school. You had a guy that could play the drums. You had a guy that could play cymbals. You had a guy that played the bass, the guitar, who could sing, everything. Everybody had a band. That's how all these R&B band groups came up in the 70s and 80s. When you went to the cities, you team up with somebody in there because y'all have music. Y'all learn. People learn how to write music. Why? Because now you have this trade. You could be a musician for hire. They could hire you to play drums somewhere. You can make $1,200 a week just traveling to studios being hired to play drums. That's a trade that we were very good at. But they taken that away. Saying we got to stop teaching them these. They have to go out and seek it. So now in the inner city, that was your way out. They closing that avenue. Look at all the construction worker now. We used to know how to build. All my family is from Alabama. Like Kwame Brown, he's from Georgia. My family grew up in Georgetown, Georgia, which is right on the outskirts of the, of the bridge. And when they get to that Georgia bridge and you cross over into Eufaula, Alabama, that's where my family from. Georgetown, Georgia, and Eufaula, Alabama. So... We know everybody out there in that South knew before they migrated out here to the Midwest and came all the way up here. My grandfather drove us up here and lived with my auntie and took my grandma and came up here and started his family and started working here at the mill. They opened up the jobs out here. Doing that in the 20s and 30s. So... When you, when you go through opportunities and situations like that and you start to see those things unfold the way they do, you start to question yourself. Like, boy, what in the world is going on in this world today? Because back then, I tell you, my grandfather, he was the electrician, the plumber, the auto mechanic, he could paint. Ain't nothing he couldn't do. Garden, cook. The man was a jack of all trades. And he wasn't no anomaly. Everybody down in his age group could do that stuff. They could do all of it. And the reason why is because they they was known. They back in those days, and I asked my grandfather, I said, man, how do you know how to do all this stuff? He said, we had no choice. We had to do it to survive. Think about that. Because you're going to be in a situation, you don't, your car break down on the road, out there on them roads, when them, you're going to wait for a, one of them racist dudes to come help you. You think they're going to help you? They're going to see you by yourself somewhere out there. You might get roped. You better know how to fix that car. And get that car moved. And get up out of there. I never understood when I was a kid why we never stopped at restaurants on the road. My grandfather just stopped for gas and kept driving through these towns. Now, the times weren't the same. Things didn't change, but it was the program. And my mom, then, we always would go back down south. 
right? We will always drive back down south from up here, go back and forth. Now, the reason why is because when my mother and them were kids, they it was, you know, still the racial, everything, segregation. We all, my grandma always fixed a whole bunch of food. <laughs> she would fry up some chicken legs. She had some boiled eggs. You had, you had everything you needed. They had a whole thing of sodas. Car be full. And everybody packed in the car. Like sardines to go 12, 13 hour drive. Now, the situation is always changing. The narrative's always changing. Things are always a little bit different, right? But we never stopped at those restaurants for a reason. We go to the gas stations, go to the bathroom. And my mom, when she was out there, they still had colored and white bathrooms. And my mom didn't understand that. And went into one of the whites' bathrooms and used the bathroom. Now, nothing happened, thank God, but she didn't know any better. And she was just didn't understand. She said, it's it, colored and white at this, at this uh, filling station in the bathroom. And she had went into the, the white bathroom. She just didn't know. But just in that instance, what if she got caught going in there in this town? What could have happened? You see, but they were, my, my grandparents kind of shielded them from that and said, we know what's going on. They always never really stopped on the road. My grandfather could drive 12 hours straight. He didn't want to pull over to go to sleep on the roads. None of that stuff. He wanted to go from A to B, 12 hours, no sleep. He asleep when he get home. He hitting that road. So that's him. That was what they were for. But this is the point I'm trying to make. This is why the conditions were where they were. And this is why you had to learn trades. This is why these things are very important. If you look in today's time, you, uh, us, people that look like me or my complexion, we are being erased. And when I mean erased, I mean you're just living, you're existing, you're not living. That's not the same as living, existing. You sitting around working at some dead end job because you don't know how to do anything. You haven't been taught. You haven't been educated. You ain't pay attention. Half of these people can't remember one thing about school that they didn't learn. They're like, well, what have you ever learned in school? They couldn't even tell you. They were so busy in there talking to girls, chilling, trying to turn in a paper here and there. They don't care. And it's so sad because when the real, the world don't have no time for excuses, they're going to move past you and go to somebody else. I just saw the West Coast rappers sit down with the police officers and they said the exact, and the police officer said the exact same thing that I said to y'all when I said the only way to fix the problem is that you got to have people that look like us policing ourselves. We got to police our own areas. They have segregated the majority of white folks away from Blacks or African American or people of color, they go through their whole life and don't have to bump into any white people. I mean, any black people. So when they are introduced to that, why are you training them to throw them in the community to deal with people that they don't know how to surround themselves by or identify with? First thing they're going to do is be nervous for no reason. I mean, but they never equate, like, how would a black guy feel if he was in put in the middle of a whole bunch of white people he never really been around? If he felt nervous. I mean, think he's got no reason to be nervous around us. Maybe he do. <laughs> Maybe he do. <laughs> so, 
Police officer said it. Man, I want to hire some of you guys in here. I want to have some of you guys out there policing the uh, your own communities. And that way you guys know or are familiar so things wouldn't go over the board. Because they look at the numbers. These accidental shootings of people of color. It don't seem to be happening with African-American cops. Why is that? That's a very telling sign. And the reason why it's very telling is because we know that there's going to be repercussions for what we do. There's going to be repercussions for everything we do. Straight up and down. So once again, shout out to Kwame Brown Bus Life. Make sure you subscribe to his page, his YouTube page. I I put you in the description box now. I didn't know that. I never really went to my description box in about two, three years. So I didn't know. And the way YouTube didn't change since then, I didn't even know how to go back in there and put nothing in there. But you, you in there now. <laughs> so, but we always shout at you out. And for those who are here, don't forget to subscribe to this page if you're new here. Welcome. Yeah, we get educational here. We love to talk about education and what's, what the real problem is. Because it's easy to take away all the tools and give them all the weapons to destroy themselves and say, man, look at him. He's a savage. He's a goon. This is why I don't use those words. I don't use savage or goon in my vocabulary. And the reason why is because that's the way they tried to make us out to be. Now we're embracing it to try to make it endearing. But this is the way they look at you anyway. They want you to make that cool so they can call you a savage and a beast. A goon. Nah. Not here. So creating educational school programs. Dude, all you got to do to know how a system works is go in a town where it works. You know what the problem is. I've told y'all for years what the problem is. It starts from the youth. All you have to do is take a look at the youth. That's it. These young kids out here where I live, do you know what they got? They have communities where they could just hang out. They got places where they can go. Do you know I got a tennis court? Basketball court? I got all that right outside this door. Around the corner. I got a baseball field. A baseball field. I got all of this recreation. And then, as soon as I step out, I go make another left. You know what I got? I got a, a internet cafe, social gathering that breaks down the tension of, I don't know you, you don't know me, you live over there, I don't know you, we finna go to war. For what? There's programs that was put in our city in Chicago, which is, was like a war zone, where guys were getting out of gangs because they had a center to go to. That's out there. So there's people out here trying to make a difference. Shout out to D Nash out here in Chicago. But these brothers were out here getting these guys. And this guy said, these children, they're teenagers. He said, man, this is my best friend now. He said, I, I would have probably shot and took this guy's life years ago. Because he lived from over there. I didn't know him. He lived from over there. And we from over here. And 
If I see him on the streets, you know, if we'd have met up on the streets, it would have been different. <laughs> but now we have a place of gathering. We come here. I met him. Now he's my best friend. <laughs> That's telling. The children tells you what the problem is. You just got to listen and you got to give a damn. The problem is there's no recreation. That's what the malls used to be for. Now the malls are battlegrounds. <clears throat> Y'all know I ain't lying. Y'all know what I'm talking about is 100% real. 100% real. So I'm sorry if you guys feel like this is an educational video and everything else, but it's needed. It needed to be said. It needs to be echoed again and again and again because these are the problems in the communities. You're over-policed because they put you in a position where they know you're going to do nothing but crime. Ain't nothing for you to do but go outside and join a gang. You got no recreational center. You have no internet cafe. You have no, no place where kids can go to meet or gather and actually be kids. So their first interaction in the things is to go outside in their community. No learning centers. Nothing. They need to create an opportunity for these guys who know trades, for all the, the brothers and people out there that know trades that want to help, they need to go out and teach classes on the weekends. Do one free class a day, I mean a week. You know, charity work. Put in four, five hours, one day a week, and teach these kids a trade. We need automotive classes. Some of these kids are taught. They know how to fix cars and know everything else. They just don't even know what the parts are. They just know how to fix it. They know they put this here, but they don't even know what the hell it's called. And all everybody up here up north love to look at people down south. And talk about, <laughs> they dumb, they stupid. Look how slow they talk. They smarter than you. <laughs> <clears throat> they smarter than you. <clears throat> I know, crazy am I? But they smarter than you. And you putting them down. They can they could farm. They know agriculture. They they are book smart. <laughs> Cause down there they was gonna have to get them grades up. Now you might dress fancier than them. You might put all this stuff on and make yourself look like a million bucks, but you walk around dumb as rock. They could fix a car, probably put one together. <laughs> Why are you trying to go out and buy one? You buying stuff from them. They the ones farming. So before you start calling somebody dumb, <laughs> you better make sure you know more than them. <laughs> so I'm going to get out of here, man. Thank you again. Subscribe to the page. Like the page. Like the video, man. And. Thanks again to Kwame Brown for shouting us out. I appreciate all that love and support, bro. We just doing what we doing on a regular basis.